This is a cold plate, it's kind of like the opposite of a hot plate. It works by sucking the heat out of the surface and moving it to this radiator that dissipates it into the air. The cold plate is made from four CPU water coolers and four Peltier modules that move heat from one side to another using electricity. The Peltier modules are mounted to the water coolers with a layer of thermal compound to conduct the heat more efficiently. The surface is a solid piece of copper which is the third best conductor of heat only behind silver and diamond. When the power is switched on, the copper plate quickly drops in temperature to about minus 20 degrees Celsius and can quickly freeze water on contact. By switching the power on and off we can form water crystals instantly and melt them again in just a few seconds. Something even more interesting happens when you put some water in a smooth metal dish. The water begins to cool down but it is unable to form ice crystals even though the temperature has reached well below 0 degrees Celsius. This is because the water is super cooled and has no nucleation site or seed crystal to begin the crystallization process. We can introduce a seed crystal by scraping some of the frozen condensation from the copper plate and placing it in the center of the dish. The water will immediately begin forming crystals. If you leave the water to cool long enough, impurities will cause spontaneous nucleation. This dish of tap water froze at minus 4.3 degrees. It's also possible that the thermometer probe provided a nucleation site as the crystal formation starts at the corner of the suction cup. If we put a saucepan on the cold plate we can see a much slower crystallization. This is caused by the temperature gradient in the water. The water at the surface is slightly warmer than the water at the bottom of the pot. When a seed crystal is dropped on the surface it grows slowly until it reaches the colder region, where the ice formation speeds up rapidly, 